Hi everyone, James Mantle here bringing you yet another video. In today's video, we're doing yet another episode of Iconic Blondes. Yes! And today's Iconic Blonde is a true favorite of mine. We are doing none other than the queen of rap herself, Nicki Minaj. Yes, we are doing a classic Nicki Minaj inspired hairstyle. We're going all the way back to classic Nicki eras, back when she wore bangs. Oh my God, her bang era. So many with pink ends, with green ends, with full just blonde. We're gonna do a classic clean blonde look. Now what's interesting about her bangs and her like bob look is like they were long, but they tapered up in the back to a really unique like bob style with a long front. Super intricate. So I'm gonna get my wig right here and we'll be right back and start on this iconic <laughs> hairstyle. All right, I am back. I have right here the Femme Fatale in 613 available at James Mansfield Beauty. Now let's start this hairstyle. I'm going to first things first, separate my bang area. I'm gonna pull a triangular area. Now I'm looking at it, it looks like it may be a hard front or they really, really rooted like the, the whole area up top to make sure you saw nothing. So that's what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna try my hardest to make it look like bangs are cut into it. And we're gonna try and mask the rest of it with teasing. Cause for the most part, it looks like the wig had like built in bangs. Okay, so separate these girls. Just make sure they are combed and brushed together as tightly and neatly as possible if we're making a thick rolled bang like this. All right, now I have the bangs for the most part pulled fairly tightly like that. I want a nice thick area of it because she's got really thick rolled bangs. And it's important to this hairstyle. It's not gonna look right if the bangs are not thick. So take that and we'll roll it up because we're gonna cut it later. And any kind of fixes we need to do, we'll just do it when it comes to it. All right, have that rolled up. Let's take our long needle, just put that in there, and we're gonna keep her out of the way for now. But for the most part, that is a good start. Now, I have to tease the whole base to get a nice lift because if I do just the regular bob, it's gonna look really, really small on my head. All right, so Nicki Minaj, believe it or not, I have been following Nicki Minaj's career since almost the very beginning. Like I remember the very, very old days when she had the black wig with the bangs and the pink in the back. Like that's the classic Nicki era. Come up Nicki, we call her. Like the look she had when she was on the come up DVD and she had made her debut in like a mainstream song with um, the Five Star Chick remix with Trina. And I'll take you even further back, girl. I remember when she did a theme song for Victoria in WWE, I Ain't the Lady to Mess With. Yes, when she was with the Hood Stars with um her and Safari. Oh my God. Safari? Saf oh no, Safari was the girl from Flavor of Love. Safari. Right, different person. <laughs> Not Safari. She wasn't in a group with Nicki Minaj. <laughs> Oh my God, y'all remember that? And like the charm school and Monique burned her name. She's like, that name has a lot of negative meaning to it. And she's like, that's my real name. <laughs> and Monique was like, my bad. <laughs> oh, you can't get television like that anymore. Anyways, this isn't about Safari, it's about Nikki. <laughs> Went off on a tangent there. But yes, oh my God, I adore Nicki Minaj. Like, it was a cultural reset it is what we needed, okay? Because women's rap at that point was getting pretty ignored. When she had came into rap, it really kind of opened the gates for a lot of other newcomers to come along and rejoin the form. Because like at that point, like female rap was not getting the attention it deserved. And it needed someone to like breathe new life into it. And like Nicki Minaj, you couldn't help but get into it because she was just so animated. And she was such a character when you first saw her, like a distinctive look, like she knew exactly what she wanted to look like. And you could recognize her instantly with like that hair, with the bangs and the pink. And she, would, at that time she was carrying around a stack of money in her purse that she'd pull out. Like she was not afraid to be a little gimmicky as long as it made her memorable. And like she soon dropped a lot of that stuff, but like for the most part, after she had gained a little bit of success, like she didn't stop from there. Her hairstyles got out. Outrageous. Like big old like explosion atom bomb hair to like prints all throughout her hair. Different colors, different lengths, different tapers of bobs. I remember when she was on the Femme Fatale tour at Britney Spears. Ernie actually saw that live in Milwaukee. 
And she was wearing that blonde bob, that real thick ass blonde bob too. I remember that was a real thick bob, her Torin wig. She had kind of opened a door for a lot of other newcomers to come through. Like there's so many women in rap now. But when she was coming out, there wasn't that really that many and a lot of them weren't really active anymore. What I also think was so cool is like, she had basically done her research and like, was not gonna sign to just anything. She was very, very smart and calculated about what kind of deal she was gonna sign for a record deal. She ended up going with Young Money because the other record deal that approached her was not it. She did not like the setup. She didn't wanna be one of those girls in the music industry that just got taken advantage of, you know, got taken for a ride and had a few albums and a few hits and that was all we heard of them. Like she had a whole grand scheme of mind about the legacy she wanted to leave. Honestly, you can say she has left it. All right, now I'm going to tease out the rest of this bass and I'll be back. <laughs> All right, I'm back. Now I started smoothing one side off camera. That's how it should look. So I'm fairly pleased with how that looks. I saw you. Yes, I can't sing anymore because that song's copyrighted. Oh, damn Lana Del Rey ruining everything. Okay, so. I'm just smoothing down these sides because we're gonna try and make a lace front and do what was possibly a hard front's job. Plus like, it's gotta look thick, you know? So that's why I added the teasing to it because it gives that nice little boost to my head because my head's really, really big. And Nicki Minaj is a very small woman. So everything on her probably looked way bigger when it comes to hair. Like I'm certain you don't have to do a whole lot to make hair look huge on her. Now I loved this era of Nicki because this is right in like Pink Friday, Roman Reloaded kind of era. And she was rocking a lot of these hairstyles. Like she was fresh on the scene. She had an album that we all were anticipating and didn't know what it was gonna sound like. And when it came out, like girl, it was groundbreaking. Like Pink Friday is an amazing album. When you look at like rap albums in the past and anything like it, like like the closest I can think of a like rap song coming close to like sounding like a pop song from a female rapper had to be Million Dollar Girl from Trina featuring Carrie Hilson. Girl, that was a great song too. That was a shame, like Trina's whole pop crossover was a shame that like people let that, like people slept on it. Like she was giving us hits and we completely just slept on her and it was undeserved the way we treated Trina at that time. She should have been a bigger pop star than she became. But again, Nicki Minaj's album, Pink Friday, groundbreaking. And, like I'll admit, like I had my doubts when it was like announced. I was like, okay, let's see how this is gonna go because like, I've been disappointed by a lot of like artists, like debut albums, like they had a lot of hype surrounding them, but like she delivered. Like every song on the album, you can't skip it. Like it's so good. And that's really remarkable. And like you think about like Nicki Minaj's relationship with like award shows and stuff like that. Like Pink Friday should have gotten way more awards than it did. Like they really, really ignored that album and just how ahead of its time it was. Like she had fully transformed herself into a bona fide pop star. She was on Divas Live. Girl, everything has led to her being a judge on American Idol. Like she was everywhere at this point. Okay. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to steam this bang and I will do a quick cut and just jump right back to you guys. Quick cut time. All right, I am back. And yes, there's a big ass steamer right here, but I got a little busy. I did one side off camera and I learned a lot while doing it because I've never really done a hairstyle like this before. But like I said, the bob tapers backwards. Like it, it's short in the back and goes longer in the front so that the dangling front has like a nice long illusion. And then when she turns around, it's short in the back. Like, you know, you get two hairstyles in one. And I made a little bit of a mistake, but I'm gonna try and do better on this side. On this side, it got a little too straight, so I have to curl it a little bit more at the end to make it match a little more. But we're gonna get to that when we get to it. I'll do a better job on this side, because it's all learning while we're doing this. Because like, like I said, I've never done this before, so <laughs> kind of, you know, winging it here, folks. What I'm going to do is what I did to the back, which actually worked out really well. I'm gonna turn my steamer on. And what we're gonna do is I'm going to press it so that it straightens the hair up here, but we still get a curve near the end. And I have to do it at like an angle so that it will curve downward like that to create a taper. Press it over it just to straighten it out. And like I said, angle it so that it tapers. And that's all it should need for now. We'll come back to that. See, I'm learning so much doing this. Like this hairstyle always like amazed me because it's so different. <laughs> like, <laughs> she was so innovative when it came to her hairstyles. Like I love this two in one moment. All right, now pray for me. I'm gonna start a little longer and then work my way you know, shorter. Hey, I kind of got it to match. Yes. 
I gotta straighten it a little bit more so, but that's a good place to start. Let's do the back part and then we can just kind of balance it out from there. I gotta turn this devil steamer on again. And this one, what I was doing is I would guide the brush over it to hold it straight and then, like I said, press it so that we still keep the curve. And this you gotta be careful with because I nearly burn my fingers like eight times doing this. <laughs> this is a lot easier to do with a curling iron. I imagine Nikki's was human, but we're working with synthetic on this channel. And note, I'm holding an angle so that it curves down. That's very important. I'm getting so instructional with this one. Oh my God. I would be remiss to mention the successes of Nikki's career and not mention one of my favorite moments it had to be her Grammy's performance. That was such a moment. Bear in mind, like the backstory behind, like they did not want her to perform that at all. Like the Grammys were not having it. They didn't think it was appropriate for her to be performing it. And she put her foot down and said like, no, this is the song I'm doing. Us gays, we knew, okay? We knew we were witnessing like a moment, like, you know, what we needed as far as like hip hop at the Grammys, female rap, Nicki Minaj was giving it to us in spades and critics just were not hip at that time. They did not get it. They were very, very dismissive of her saying horrible things. What I liked about her and her reaction to that is like, they would try to get her go on radio stations and stuff and bring it up, like all the terrible reviews she got for it. And she'd be like, that was my best performance ever. And she knew because she was right. <laughs> like it was everything like this exorcist themed Roman holiday. She had priests and dancers, like girl, it was everything I wanted. Like you thought Madonna was wild. Come on now, Nikki was giving it to you. And while we're on the topic of the Grammys, let's talk about it. Main topic number one, Nikki deserves a Grammy. Where is her Grammy? Like she hasn't been nominated in forever. And the whole story behind that is there's a conspiracy that they basically are blocking her. The Recording Academy has a big issue with her dating back to her performance of Roman Holiday because they did not want her to perform that night. And she's like, no, I rehearsed, I'm gonna perform. And rightfully so, it's like she did the work let her perform. On the flip side of that, honestly, at this point, her career speaks for itself. Like she doesn't need a Grammy. It puts her in a category of artists that help pave the way for music and don't have Grammys. When you think about it, like the Recording Academy is kind of like, you know, the Academy Awards. It's all industry people. So it's all voted on people that are in the industry. That's why they act like it matters more because it's your peers voting on it. It's not public voted and that very rarely ever takes into account how much somebody sells or how popular they are or how influential the album is. It's a matter of, you know, people voting in an academy and deciding who gets what. And Nicki Minaj has honestly foregone that. Like the legacy she's left behind speaks for itself. She don't need no damn Grammy to prove that she has merit. And you think of amazing artists that have paved the way for music that don't have Grammys. Like my some of my favorite artists, like the Ronettes don't have a Grammy and they're looked at as people that changed the face of rock and roll. They weren't even nominated for Be My Baby, believe that or not. Artists that have the best albums, their best songs, very rarely actually are nominated for Grammys and very, very rarely ever win for it. It's all politics. <laughs> now this is gonna be interesting for me. We're gonna see how this works. I'm just trying to marry the bangs with the hair. So that's one seamless piece. It's gonna look a bit like Cousin It, but it's gonna work out, okay? I promise you this. All right, now let's gather it. Oh my God, it's actually kind of there. <laughs> I actually did pretty good. Oh my God, <laughs> it kind of looks like it. Hold on, let me lift it up. Like this one definitely needs a bit of a curl and this may need to get straightened out, but like I pull it out, girl. Yes, iconic classic Nikki style. I just need to clean it up a little bit and straighten some things and curl some things. But this hairstyle is pretty much there. And like the picture I'm going off of, it's more straight like that. So like you can kind of, you honestly can go in any direction you want. Like she wore this curly, she wore it with colors on the bottom. Like she had a lot of fun with this hairstyle. She had a lot, quite a few wigs like this. So like any direction you choose to go, it's gonna be on the mark. Now for the most part, this is pretty much done. Like this is more the end result I think we're gonna go for. I'll add a slightest curve to it and then mimic it on the other side. And we'll be right back with the final <laughs> result. Welcome back. Oh my God, you guys. This hairstyle is surprisingly a lot harder than I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> like, I, it looks fairly simple. I thought, okay, I'm gonna breeze through this. It's just cutting a bob in the back with like a taper. No problem. On a synthetic, it turns out it's actually a lot harder than it looks. <laughs> 
Because once you start teasing it and curling it and steaming it and everything and you lose the curl and it straightens, like, it's a whole nother story. I just say, like, this hairstyle was a lot more work than I expected it to be. I'm not mad at the final result. I feel like it's fairly close. I got a lace front to do what was clearly probably a hard front job. If I had to do this again, I probably would do it again on like a human hair wig. Like, cause that is easier to hold the curl and everything. Cause once I took the curls out, it was surprisingly hard to get them back. Like it turns out no matter what you do, the steamer is always your best friend. So I got, managed to get a curl back in the bottom of it with the steamer, but it was a lot of work. I even was using a curling iron at one point. <laughs> Okay, now this is the back of the head. Like I said, it's supposed to taper into like a bob. And look at my back. Oh my goodness. <laughs> again, if I had to do this again, I would do this on a human hair wig because it's just easier to cut and a lot easier to curl. And I'd probably just sew a couple tracks up here to get that nice dense bang that she had. I wonder if it's also like a clip and bang or something attached to it. Like how many augmentations went into making that hair? Or maybe she's just really small and it just looks big on her no matter what. Either way, I'm curious like what went into this. I'm happy with the final result. I feel like it's fairly close and close enough as I'm gonna get on a lace front wig. Now this was so much fun to do. It was a journey, but I'm glad it is over. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, bye. Now hit the outro. Click here and see how Trixie Cosmetics broke my heart. Or see me bake a Dolly Parton cake. Or see my last episode of Iconic Blondes. It was Britney Spears. Come on, click it. You know you want to. If you don't click it, I'm going to go on a Roman holiday. A Roman holiday. So click it.